Hello, my friend. Grab yourself a cup of decaf and let's talk. Today's video is going to be about the price of shooting Super 8 film. It's hard to articulate the magic of Super 8, though I did recently make a video about the magic of film in general. However, there's no getting around the fact that it is expensive to shoot Super 8, and it's probably the question that I get asked most frequently about shooting film and the process is, how expensive is it? So. Today in this video, I'm going to be detailing kind of two things. One question sort of is how expensive is one roll of Super 8 is usually the question getting asked. And then what is my workflow for shooting Super 8, sort of the processing and the scanning side that relates to the expenses. So let me start right off the top to tell you this is not sponsored in any way. I do have a favorite and I am an affiliate for my favorite, however, when it comes to the sponsorship of this particular video, no one has any say. I'm making this on my own. But I do sort of have a sponsor, and it's me. It's my shop. So if you are curious and you haven't seen it before, I do have a product called the Fake 8 Film Lab. It is because I know Super 8 is incredibly expensive, and I know that it's really difficult to get a realistic, fake Super 8 look. But sometimes the expense isn't there in your budget to be able to record real Super 8. Maybe you don't have the expertise or the desire to learn real Super 8, but you want the look, or maybe you have a client who wants to add it after you already finished the shoot. Anyway, the sponsor of this video, if there was one, is basically my shop. I would appreciate it if you check it out. Go look at the Fake 8 Film Lab. I'll touch on that a bit later, but let's dive right in, not waste any more time. In the simplest terms, Super 8 costs me $125 per roll. That's about an average estimate there, but that's about what it ends up being because I love to use Pro 8 millimeters prepaid packages. And again, yes, I am an affiliate, but that's because for multiple years I've been using them, love their products, and I reached out and asked them if I could be an affiliate because I was already pointing so many people in their direction. I think that the Pro 8 millimeter prepaid scanning packages are so easy. They just make life incredibly easy when it comes to film, which is already a somewhat difficult process. So that's what I recommend to everyone. And in the link below, that is my exact prepaid order. It is not the cheapest, and this video is not about the cheapest way to shoot Super 8. There are great articles and resources on that. That's not what this video is. This is about my workflow personally. So. There are cheaper options out there. I welcome you to go explore them. You can order the film directly, have it processed in one lab, and then have it scanned at a different lab. That's probably the cheapest way to go. But if you're looking for the easiest and most realistic workflow that I prefer, then I'm going with a prepaid package where it's all together, all in one. And the unique thing about Pro 8 millimeter is that they have 250D. So they have daylight balanced film at 250 ISO. And the reason they are the only ones who sell it is because that's actually not a Super 8 film stock. The reason that they are the only ones who sell it is because they have to cut that film out of larger sheets of film and make it so that it works for Super 8. And they are the only ones that do it. For me, when it comes to choosing my film stock, I choose 250D. That's one of the other popular questions that I get in my workflow. The reason that I choose 250D is because the options really are 50D, 200T, and 500T. And 250D for me has been the perfect all-around film. 50D is often too dim at 50 ISO for many lighting environments that I find myself in. 200T I often don't like because the uh, tungsten affects the white balance outdoors, and I would rather have a daylight balanced film. And then of course 500T it's great to have the light, but if I'm ever in sunlight, 500 is way too strong of an ISO for Super 8 film. And with the tungsten white balance, outdoors doesn't work great either. After you make your way through the selection of the film stock and you're choosing what company you wanna go with and all of those other elements, then you have to choose about the scanning settings and you have to choose the way that you want the film scan, not just the resolution, but the color correction, things like that. And so 
My simple recommendation on those pieces is I always ask for a 2K scan because there have been a number of tests that are proving that somewhere around 2K is about the maximal image that you can get out of Super 8 film. And then when it comes to the processing, I have gone back and forth between the Pro 8 millimeters option of best light, which is essentially where they just set the balance and the exposure while scanning using a single frame and then they just scan the whole thing that way and you get it back pretty much as a finished product. However, if you shot in a huge variety of different lighting environments, like at a wedding for instance, you might end up with a wide variety of usable footage and I would say it's probably not best if you've been shooting in a vast you know, variety of environments. So if you've been shooting indoors and outdoors and in the dark, I just think that you need to order log and that's why I've gone back and forth on the options is because sometimes I just want best light, which is where it's one simple scan. What you get back is pretty much a finished result. The alternative is log, where you get back a very flat scan that you will have to color correct. And you will have to color correct it because it is very, very flat. It's not what Super 8 is intended to look like coming straight out of a camera. So once you color correct it, you add some contrast, you add some saturation, you fix that up which is a different video altogether, then you end up with an image that is much more acceptable uh, in terms of a final image for Super 8. However, that does require a little bit of technique, a little bit of know-how, and so if you need to, you can pay for color correction. You can actually pay for a log scan with color correction. I've never done that before because I know how to color correct myself. However, I think that would be a great option if you're not someone who's familiar with color grading although it will add to the expense of shooting film. The last part of the scanning process is choosing the scanning format. So there's the resolution, there is the color, and then there is the format. And so there are a variety of options about cropped or overscanned, things like that. And essentially I ask for the full format overscan from Pro 8mm. That's what they call it. Other scanning services may call it something different or may not offer it, but I want the maximal amount of image that the scanner is providing. And so if I want to crop later, I'll do that. I'll make the choice to have a cropped image, but I want to receive back from the lab the largest available image so that I can choose if I like the top and the bottom overlay, or if I'd like to crop into the image, if I want the full perforation over on the edge, but I want to have the choice. So like I said, the total cost for scanning itself is about $125 because between shipping from inside the United States to Pro 8 millimeter, as well as um, paying if you want return shipping to get your film back, those things, all of these little small costs, it total adds up to about $125. I think the actual package is about $110 for the production scan, which is 2K and 250D. So those things, add up to about $125. However, you don't have a camera yet if this is your first roll of Super 8. Now, as for sourcing a camera, finding one for cheap or finding one that works, this is a whole video that could be made. I know that Matt Johnson actually dedicated a part of his Super 8 video to understanding that process. Maybe go watch that. I actually haven't watched it, um, but I know that someone told me about that resource and it seems like it might be worth watching. So go watch that if you need tips on finding a good or cheap Super 8 camera. Um, in the end, I will say that you're not probably going to find a Super 8 camera unless it's a friend or family member or something like that for under $100 working. I would tell you that you're probably going to need to be budgeting about $100 at the minimum side and then probably up to about four to five hundred dollars on the nicest side or the more expensive side of film cameras and then you could push up into a thousand dollars there are some really insane super 8 cameras available but i would say that in the end if you shop well if you know some tips about how to search on ebay or marketplace you might end up finding a camera like this one that I have here, which is the Canon 814 XL electronic for about $200 to $300. So that's where I would say is the sweet spot, maybe around $200 to $300 for 
a used Super 8 camera in good working condition. So total right now, if you spent $250 on a camera and you spent $125 on your first roll, we're at about $375 for one roll of Super 8. And there may be some hidden expenses inside of this. So let's go ahead and throw in an extra $100 maybe. So put it close to 500. And that's because you're going to have to have little unforeseen costs where you might end up messing up your first roll. So you have to add in another roll on top of that because maybe you messed up a roll. Now you have to try a new roll. And maybe you, uh, you know, bought some batteries for this. Um, you know, some of them require special batteries. Others are just double A's. Maybe there were missing pieces with your camera. So you have to order replacement parts um, or order a parts camera in order to replace some of the parts. Or maybe you have to pay to have it repaired. Anyway, I have been through the ringer when it comes to Super 8 and Super 8 cameras. I've, I've experienced all of these expenses. And so there may be a lot of unforeseen expenses. So let's go ahead and budget for that now. And let's say that the total cost of your first roll of Super 8 film is about $500, somewhere in that range. Now, the second roll of Super 8 is now just the expense of Super 8, as long as you know that your camera is still working and that it continues to work with each roll. So after that, you're sitting somewhere close to $125 per roll of film. So I've pretty much covered my process. However, none of this addresses the real unforeseen expense of Super 8. Now this part is where we are going to get into a little bit of a discussion about my product, the Fake 8 Film Lab. However, I'll try not to make this a commercial, but I need to talk about the risk of shooting Super 8 because that is a part of the cost for me. And so, for example, with wedding days, which is when I shoot most of my Super 8, these are memories that you can't replicate. They'll never happen again. And fortunately, only on one occasion, but unfortunately, on one occasion, I did have a roll that came out completely blank. The film never moved through the camera. And I have a whole separate video that I should be making soon about Super 8 tips and advice, um, because I learned a lesson that day about an error that I made. and. It was my mistake and the Super 8 didn't turn out and I was able to save, fortunately, the feeling that this couple was wanting by using my product, the Fake 8 Film Lab. However, the real risk of Super 8 is that you are working with probable 40 to 50 year old cameras. Um, if they are in the you know prime time of Super 8, they are 50-ish year old cameras. And you're working with a medium that is outdated in many technological ways. And so you run a pretty major risk, I would say, uh, with respect to someone's cherished memories. And I don't take that lightly. And so I put that in this video because I think it needs to be communicated very clearly that Super 8, as fun and as magical as it is, it does have that major cost, which is unforeseen risk and the possible risk of failure and losing some cherished memories along the way. So that's the major thing that I wanted to uh, address in kind of the unforeseen aspects of Super 8. However, then there are, like I mentioned earlier, the unforeseen costs of camera repairs or having to buy new cameras altogether, having to replace parts on the camera. Sometimes you have to buy a parts camera, which basically is just uh, to back up your other one so that you can kind of swap in stuff. So all sorts of little unforeseen costs, messed up rolls, um, batteries, random things like that. So all of those sorts of things also fit into the unforeseen costs category. I say this unforeseen risk section and I, I share about the Fake 8 Film Lab because I do think it's a valuable investment for anyone who uh, maybe already shoots Super 8 and needs a supplement for certain shots or moments that they missed and they want to be able to get the shot in Super 8 uh, or people who don't want to go through all of these expenses and the troubles and the worries of real Super 8 but they want the results and they want something that gets that close to Super 8 without actually having to bear the risk and the expense of all of these different components. So that's this video for you. I have covered everything that I wanted to in this about my workflow, the expenses, 
and in general why fake 8 film lab has been a really exciting product for me to have personally i have used it countless times and i continue to receive really positive feedback about it so thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful for you and have a good day Thank you.